Hello everyone, it's me again, Final Fantasy Lessons. However, today we are not discussing Final Fantasy, which I guess as you may have figured out, this is not strictly Final Fantasy or any RPGs. It's encompassing almost any game that I can think of at the time anyway. Well, today we're going to be discussing Western RPGs, specifically Fallout 3, uh, we're going to mostly be diving into a few money tips on how to get caps in the game. Um, most of these are completely honest, and what I mean by that is that they're general honest ways to gain money. You don't take advantage of any mods or any glitches in the game. These are some of the methods that I did to help get myself started when I first started playing. Um, some of them are quite obvious, and you may know them already. Um, the following clip is just... It's not showing all the tips, but the following clip is going to be showing me actually exchanging blood packs at Maristi Train Yard. Um, that's all the clip is, but as it's rolling, I'm going to be talking about several other ways to get money. And so that's that. Let's get started. Okay, first off, um, I had to turn the noise way down because as I was traveling to the train yard, I somehow winded up right in the middle of an albino scorpion spawning point, and I ended up fighting, which kind of ticked me off a little bit. I was hoping to get through this video smoothly without having to find anything, but yeah, I'm about to do that. Okay, to start off, um, as soon as you get to Megaton, and this will be within like the first couple of hours that you actually start playing the game, you want to um, talk to Walter. Uh, he's the um, older, he's the older gentleman who actually runs the water treatment facility in Megaton. Um, in order for this to work, you have to first um, run a little errand for him. You basically have to repair three leaking pipes that are in the city. In order to do this, you have to have a repair skill of 30. Now, it, you, when you first start off, you may not have a repair skill of 30, but trust me, it'll, it'll get up there within the first couple of levels that you actually... Um, start playing. If you want to, you can do a couple of quests to help raise it, or just wander around the area doing other stuff, trying to raise your levels. Um, if even that, you can use Mentats to even help it even more. Um, after you do that, you'll uh, from that point, you'll be able to exchange scrap metals with him. Scrap metals may seem useless, but he'll be willing to exchange 10 caps for each scrap metal. Now, that may not sound like much, but you have to realize that scrap metals are everywhere in the game. I mean, everywhere. You'll probably find them at least ten or more in each area. It's just insane. But if it's not caps you're looking for, he'll also give you experience for doing for collecting scrap metal for him. Now, there is a small glitch that sometimes happens. I found out that if you go to, like, Fort Bannister or Fort Independence, I'm not sure, it's basically the Outcast headquarters. And if you agree with the guy there to exchange technology or scrap metal with him sometimes Walter will disappear from the game entirely and you won't be able to exchange with him anymore like he'll just disappear from the game and from that point the only person in the entire wasteland you'll be able to exchange scrap metals with will be um, from a ghoul in Underworld or from the outcast at Fort um, Independence or Bannister I'm not sure which a few other good places, um, one of which that I was luck fortunate enough to discover early, will be at the Northwest Seneca Station, and this will be mapped on your marker as you're doing um, the Blood Ties quest, but you can go there anytime you want. Um, inside there will be another ghoul, I forget his name, but there's only two, and it's a small area, and you'll be able to find him real easily, but he'll be willing to exchange sugar bombs to create Ultra Jet, and Ultra Jet can be quite useful. It's basically a better, more upgraded version of Jet, but what I'm more interested in here is the caps that he gives you. Um, you'll have to complete a speech check with him. Don't worry, if you fail, he'll just basically exchange less caps for the for the sugar bombs, but if you succeed, which hopefully you can, he'll basically double his trading value. So there's that. Sugar bombs, yeah, sugar bombs are quite helpful too if you can find them, and there's plenty of places to find them actually around the game. The next place, and this will take quite a while for you to get there. Um, you can get there automatically with a couple of quests, but you can, again, you can go there anytime you want. That'll be the Arlington Library. Um, after you clear the area inside there, you'll ascribe it'll appear with a couple of Brotherhood of Steels, and she'll be willing to exchange pre-war books with you. 
Now, pre-war books are actually not very common in the waste world in the wasteland. I mean, but they sell for a lot. They sell for a hundred caps if you exchange with her. Only exchange pre-war books with her, nowhere else. And if you do, you'll get 100 caps per book. That's quite a lot, considering how um, uncommon they are. But again, you'll probably find maybe 10 in your first run through, and that's an easy 1,000 caps gained there. The next things are Brotherhood of Steel hollow tags. Now, these are basically dog tags that can be found on the dead corpses of any Brotherhood of Steel that you come across in the wasteland. Um, they can be exchanged with a female scribe who um, resides at the Citadel. Uh, the only way you can get into the Citadel is after you complete the Waters of Life quest, which is a main quest. And if you're trying to beat the game in general, you'll automatically do that quest anyway. But she'll be willing to exchange those hollow tags with you. Uh, I forget the exchange rate, but she also gives you caps and experience. And if you're a person trying to seek bad karma, you can essentially try to wipe out all of the Brotherhood of Steels inside the Citadel. Um, doing so will obviously cause the scribe to turn hostile towards you. But if you leave and come back in a couple of days and collect all the hollow tags and then give them to her, hopefully she'll be willing to exchange after that. And that's another good way. But as a person of good karma, which I usually do, I actually don't come across a whole lot of hollow tags. But I've been told that. With bad karma people, this is a good way to get money. Next are things that I used to um, basically trade most of when I was playing the game. Um, it's quite cynical, I know, but basically it's just alcohol and cigarettes. Again, like I said, it's quite cynical, but the only reason I'm saying this is because these two things are in huge abundance in the wasteland. Specifically things like whiskey, wine, vodka, scotch, pack of cigarettes, or a carton of cigarettes. These five things I collected whenever I could find them, and I could usually get, get on a good run, I could get like ten each. And my, um, my strength was pretty good enough that I was able to carry quite a bit of them. But when I exchanged, I always got it, like 700 caps back. It was r ridiculous. I mean, these are basically the two things that I found the best only because they're in abundance and you don't have to, like, try to keep searching for other heavier things that are kind of uncommon. You can use other things like fission batteries and semiconductors. They're pretty common, but unfortunately they weigh quite a bit. So I found things like cigarettes and alcohol to be uh, the best two things to carry in exchange. And then finally, as what you've been observing on the video, are blood packs. Now, you will only be able to exchange blood packs with the head leader of the family named Vance after you complete the Blood Ties mission and speak to the mayor of Erifu. I forget his name. But after you speak to him, you'll have the option to exchange blood packs with Vance. Um, blood packs are also very common. You'll find them in just about any medical kit spread around the wasteland. Um, you can go ahead and talk to Vance and have him ask you to like teach him teach you ways of the vampire, in which case you can actually use blood packs to restore your health if you want to do that. I still think stem packs are better, and I only use blood packs to exchange to get caps, and that's the only thing I use it for. Of course, if you have the cannibal perk, you will may want to keep the blood packs, but again, that's up to you. And that's basically the last thing I have to share with you. Hopefully these tips will help you, and that's it. Thank you, and enjoy.